Be warned because today's video is a spooky gruesome tale of white colonialists getting their just desserts from a masked killer. There's cannibalism, a Thanksgiving meal with real human meat, and of course the hot stepmom. At Thanksgiving in Plymouth, Massachusetts, Sheriff Eric Newland visits Mitch and Amanda Collins' house for Thanksgiving dinner, bringing a pie. Mitch, a Wright Mart superstore manager, excuses himself as he receives a call from Wright Mart owner Thomas Wright, who tells him to work that night, otherwise he will get fired. As Eric, Amanda, and the Collins elders gather at the table, Mitch cuts the turkey and leaves. Meanwhile, at Thomas' home, Thomas credits the idea of opening the store during Thanksgiving to his fiancée, Kathleen, saying they're opening during a holiday because people always show up six hours before the midnight Black Friday sale. Ten minutes before Wright Mott opens, a growing crowd impatiently gathers outside the store, ready to secure Black Friday deals. Eric arrives at the store for crowd control, and Amanda tags along to bring Mitch food. Post-COVID, I don't think Black Friday has been the same since, so we don't have to worry about this happening. Right? Right. Thomas' daughter, Jessica, her star pitcher boyfriend, Golden Arm Bobby, and her friends, Evan, Gabby, Scuba, and Yulia, make their way to the movies. However, stuck in traffic outside of Wright Mart, Evan decides to drop by the store to buy a new phone because his phone got smashed in a fight. Although hesitant since she knows the store is incredibly busy during Black Friday deals, Jessica lets the group enter the store early through the employee entrance and asks Bobby, who wants to stay by the car, to accompany her. Inside, Evan picks up a phone and an appliance and taunts Lonnie, his opponent in the fight, who's in the front of the crowd. Lonnie and the others angrily complain as they think the group is unfairly getting dibs on the good stuff. With the crowd getting increasingly rough, Mitch tells Doug, one of the security guards, to lock the store. But Lonnie grabs the megaphone and announces that the store is open. The crowd rushes to the store which scares Manny, the other security guard, causing him to run away. In fear that people will get crushed, Amanda, who's worried about Mitch, and Jessica's group, tell Doug to open the door. As Doug struggles to find the right key, the glass on the doors breaks and the door detaches, causing the crowd to stampede into the store, trampling him. Seeing Doug is still alive, Bobby crawls to rescue him, but he ends up breaking his arm. Upon seeing multiple casualties and Mitch grieving over Amanda's lifeless body, Eric gives a warning shot. During the chaos, Evan films the entire thing instead of hiding in fear like everyone else. Upon publishing, his video garners millions of views and becomes a piece of crucial evidence as the store's CCTV is said to have stopped working all of a sudden. Multiple lawsuits are filed and settled, and to clean their name, Thomas, with Kathleen's support, restores Plymouth Park and starts a Wright Family Foundation, which sends local kids to college. Meanwhile, Bobby, who suffers a career-ending injury, disappears and ghosts everyone, including his girlfriend Jessica. A year later, Mitch and other residents protest Wright Mott's decision to hold another Black Friday sale. Eric meets a new deputy, Deputy Brett LaBelle, at Capitaine Diner, where Lizzie, one of the people present at the incident, works as a waitress and gives out a John Carver mask to the customers, including Brett. Someone keeps tagging Jessica and her group on Evan's video, and a frustrated Gabby tries to report it, but people keep reposting it. Evan argues that he isn't the only one with a phone during the incident, and Gabby assures him that she knows he didn't post it. The Wrights, Eric, and Gabby head to the John Carver house to film a commercial, but they discover that someone has destroyed the interior of a historical landmark, vandalizing its wall with fight mart, and has stolen an axe that was displayed on the wall. Jessica, who opposes having another sale as it ignores the incident, is relieved of the cancellation of the commercial. At the diner, Jessica and her friends spot Bobby, learning of his return. Shortly after, they all receive a tag notification from a social media account named the John Carver, which posted a photo of a Thanksgiving table with the caption, The table is set. Ryan, Jessica's new boyfriend, arrives and joins the group, and gives them Pat Steeler's game tickets, earning their favor. As they rejoice, Jessica sees someone wearing a John Carver mask and staring at them from outside the diner, who disappears seconds after. Honestly, I would have ran over there and slapped that masked man into next week. Someone who's been collecting newspaper clippings of the incident reviews Evan's video and upon seeing Lizzie in it, visits the diner and eliminates her, cutting her body in half and displaying her lower half on the Wright Mart logo. At the crime scene, the police secure physical evidence of brick debris, which leads them to Cordage Park. Unperturbed by the gruesome incident, Tomas refuses to close the store and hires additional security instead. This is what we call Elon musking it in the business. The John Carver Finster posts a photo of Lizzie's lower half on the Wright Mart logo and tags Jessica's group, who discovers that their names are on the table in the Thanksgiving table photo. The group heads to the police to report the threat, and Eric and Detective Chu ask Jessica's help as they believe the perpetrator is targeting the people who were present during the Black Friday incident. 
Jessica meets Bobby outside the station and tells him that they saw him the day before at the diner. But Bobby tells her that he just arrived. He apologizes for ghosting her and stops Jessica from blaming herself, saying it was his choice to enter the store with them. Jessica confides in Bobby that in panic, Kathleen deleted the store's CCTV footage of the incident, and that she plans on reviewing the CCTV footage of the incident from the backup system in her dad's home office. Before going their separate ways, Bobby learns that Ryan, the guy he kept blocking for making moves on Jessica, is Jessica's new boyfriend. Bobby knew he'd done fudged up. The perpetrator beheads Manny, who's about to leave the country. His head is placed on the plate of his assigned seating on the Thanksgiving table, across Lizzie's spot, where Lizzie's upper half is sitting. Jessica receives a tag notification of the John Carver's photo of Lizzie and Manny with the caption, the first guests have arrived. Jessica reviews the footage from Thomas home office and sees Ryan and Scott greeting Doug. Meanwhile, Ryan, who drives by Jessica's home, gets angry seeing Bobby waiting outside. Jessica and Bobby show CCTV slides to Eric, identifying Lionel and Lonnie. When Jessica shows Ryan and Scott with Doug, Eric informs them that Ryan did not mention anything about it in his testimony, which creates suspicion, and warns the pair to be careful of whom they trust. At school, Jessica tells the group about finding Ryan in the footage, while Evan and Scuba suspect Bobby. Yulia suggests it's Mitch since he has the most motive. As Lonnie falls around with cheerleader Amy, Amy decides to tease him by jumping on the treadmill, and she ends up sitting on a well-placed knife. Meanwhile, the other guy becomes like the exorcist when she spins her head. After rampaging through Plymouth, the perpetrator abducts Seven and Gabby, and texts Jessica, who's waiting for them, to go to where they are. Jessica finds Gabby's phone and through its reflection, she sees the perpetrator's reflection, allowing her to narrowly dodge the attack and escape. She describes her attacker to Eric as dressed as a pilgrim and has a John Carver mask on. Bobby and Ryan rush to her and Bobby confronts Ryan about knowing Doug, to which Ryan says Doug supplies them with Adderall. Frustrated with the police, Scuba, together with Jessica, Sick uses a gun from Makati. Yulia's father fetches Yulia and informs her that they're moving to Florida. As Yulia packs her belongings, the perpetrator knocks out her father and the deputy sheriff guarding their house. On video call with Yulia, Scuba and Jessica witness the perpetrator attacking her, so they drive to her house. Unfortunately, they fail to save her, in a very gruesome death of her body getting caressed by a table saw. Unfortunately, we cannot show it to you because we will get demonetized. Scared but refusing to live their entire life in fear, the Wrights and Scuba, together with the police, plan to use the Thanksgiving parade to catch the perpetrator. Minutes before the parade, McCarty gives Jessica his dad's ring from Iraq, which is said to have kept his dad alive. Joining the parade, the Wrights and Scuba dress as pilgrims aboard the Wright Mott float. In the middle of the parade, a clown eliminates Lionel, who's the annual parade turkey, which drives people to scatter in panic. The Wrights and Scuba escape to a car, but the clown sedates the deputy assisting them and kidnaps the foursome after sedating them. Failing to escape, the perpetrator cooks Kathleen alive in an oven. This one was difficult to watch. After deducing that the perpetrator could be ex-military as flash grenades and smoke bombs have been used during the parade attack, the police get notified that the perpetrator is live streaming some way in Cordage Park, and they see a new Instagram photo showing the hostages and corpses dining at a Thanksgiving table, with a covered dish on the table. The police, together with the SWAT team, go to the live streamer's location, and upon inspecting the area using the Cordage Park tunnel map, they discover that the live stream is a phone live stream of a monitor live stream. The perpetrator then goes live on another phone from the hostage room. The perpetrator uncovers the dish, revealing Kathleen as the turkey, and serves Amy's blood as wine. After eliminating Evan, Jessica and Scuba unbind themselves using McCarty's dad's ring, and as they escape, they discover that they are in the Carver house. The perpetrator injures Scuba with an axe and chases Jessica, who runs through the woods. Jessica evades the perpetrator after climbing over a fence and finds an unconscious Eric in the middle of an empty road. Armed with Eric's gun, Jessica follows the perpetrator, who enters the parade warehouse, and discovers that it's Bobby. She asks for Eric's help, but after firing inside the warehouse, he tells Jessica that Bobby escaped. The police go through the warehouse where they collect a phone that's still logged into the John Carver account, and they file it as evidence. Chu informs Jessica that they've rescued her father and friends, who are safe in the hospital. Jessica asks to be left alone, and she tries to compose herself while removing bramble debris from her clothes. When Eric returns, she notices the same bramble debris on him, realizing he's the perpetrator. Realizing Jessica has figured him out, Eric reveals that he planned to frame Bobby, but he escaped, and that he was having an affair with Amanda, who was pregnant with his child during the Black Friday incident. Continuing to avenge the demise of his would-be family, he pulls out a syringe to eliminate Jessica. However, Jessica shows Eric the phone taken as evidence, revealing that she is live-streaming his confession. 
See Boomers, TikTok is good for something. He attacks Jessica, but Bobby arrives and saves her. As the pair evade Eric, Jessica inflates a turkey parade balloon using the tank of flammable gas it's attached to. They attempt to escape in Bobby's uncle's tow truck, but Eric hooks it around a column, preventing them from leaving. Jessica shoots the balloon turkey, causing an explosion that frees the pair and causes Eric to get devoured by flames. The morning after, Bobby gets into an ambulance and Jessica reunites with Ryan, Gabby, Scuba, and McCarty. Unable to find any trace of Eric after searching the warehouse, the police believe he has been incinerated in the explosion. However, a flaming Eric continues to terrorize a traumatized Jessica in her sleep. Wow, who know McDreamy from Grey's Anatomy would be a psychopath? What did you guys think of this one? Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.